Hello openings. There's something about dropping a bunch of people into the unknown that really appeals. Um, also, starting projects that I'm not under any obligation to finish, that's also appealing. Um, to do a good opening, to do a good opening, to write, to pen, to wordsmith yourself a good opening. The opening scene has three primary objectives. Firstly, introduce the main character by name, by full name. Do it within the first line of dialogue, the first few lines of dialogue if you have to, but you should introduce them. Sterling Archer. Morty, you gotta come on. You, you gotta come with what, me. Rick, what's... Is that hard and fast? Do I know what the old man's name is in Up? No. Did I cry? Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, we illustrate that this is what the show is like in its lowest gear. It's why so many series open up with somebody waking up. In the show's neutral state, we're telling people this is what you should expect, which is the act of putting a rug underneath them to pull it out, because step three, we show the audience that they were complete fools to trust us by subverting their expectations and showing them that we understand our concept backwards well enough to invert it. Let's look at some pilots that have that neutral state followed by a modern twist. Sterling Archer is being interrogated by Russians. Morty's asleep in bed. We open on a sleepy morning scene from the fictional sitcom Horsin' Around. China, Illinois opens on an ordinary high school class. A cute picnic and Mr. Pickles, an equally cute border collie arrives. And then, Moments later. Archer's interrogation is a simulation. We introduce his overbearing mother slash boss, and he's not taking it seriously at all. So no, this isn't a cool James Bond show. This is a dickhead that has been established and the concept that they first laid out in the scene has been subverted. Morty is dragged out of bed by his drunk rambling grandpa. He's taken up onto a spaceship and then he's left with a bomb that will destroy the Earth. Dynamic established. Sums the whole show up perfectly. Part of Bojack's sitcom that we're seeing is actually a clip during an interview. And you've got Bojack angrily defending his tacky sitcom work. It sums up Bojack's character to be so precious about his reputation while standing on such shaky ground. He wants more credit than his due, and that's the that's Bojack, that's it. China, Illinois' Steve will be pulled aside by government agents, and then Hulk Hogan makes it rain. The whole point of China, Illinois is that nothing's ever normal, that's the maxim. Nothing ever gets normal. Mr. Pickles tears a boy's guts out and leaves him to die in a river. And then we're gently played out with death metal. Comedic effect is about surprise. Surprise is about the subversion of expectations. Within the first minute, the audience sees that we understand our core concept well enough that we can invert it. They see that we can make them laugh. They trust us. You ever watch a stand-up special and you get to about halfway through it and you find that you're just laughing at everything they say? It's because they have stripped away your defenses. You're not expecting to ever really not laugh. And so Establishing trust early on is crucial to having the reaction that you want from the audience. You want your jokes to land. A good chunk of viewers will turn off during the first five to ten seconds, especially on web. So this is a really crucial time to get everything right. The opening scene is called a cold open or a teaser sequence. It's called a cold open because you go into it cold. You don't necessarily know anything about the show. It should be its own mini-sode. Uh, it's a micro of an entire episode structure. You start off in a neutral state, something comes along, complicates it, you get to a crisis, and then you end with some sort of resolution. And sometimes the resolution can just be a joke about how completely irresolvable the situation is. Ordinarily, it doesn't have too many narrative elements. We don't want to confuse people too much because we apply significance to the first people that we see. We want core cast only. If there's a tertiary character or even just a background character, the viewer, if they're watching the pilot, will assume that that is a main character. We don't introduce too much drama before people can be realistically expected to give a shit because they don't know the characters yet. To use the earlier example, Up, it took nine minutes. Now, to break down an opening scene, I'm going to use a scene from the updated version of the Starship Goldfish pilot because I've read it a million times. Interior, the Starship Goldfish, storage, morning. Start of the day scenes with people waking up are cliche as hell. I'm doing it anyway. A sonorous hum, the word dream breathes in and out. Klaxon as wake up flashes and splits revealing an aerial view of a storage room. The robotic body of Ghostworth plummets from his ceiling mounted sleeping pod. Lights flicker on and pulse in time to the voice of ship. More than a couple of sentences here, let's break them down. We open teasing very small amounts of information. We want the reader and so the viewer to be in a state of gentle suspense and then we break that open, we establish setting when we say aerial, an aerial shot, and then suddenly we have a notion of our location. We're spending a lot of exposition here, um, but that's because it's a complex concept. We want to establish character through the elements of the scene. We have another character present, Ship. Ship. Good morning, Ghostworth. You missed the, missed the handle. Thank you, Ship. In this bundle of exposition and dialogue, we've established Ghostworth's situation. All of the exposition there was weighed and measured. We wanted to establish that goes with his machinery, that he's enthralled to complex processes outside of his control. He lives in a ball on the ceiling 
and is dropped out of it in allotted time. Then we have the exchange between Ghostworth and Ship. Um, Ghostworth is informal, Ship is formal. We establish that Ghostworth may be a robot, a utility, but he is different to other utilities. Ship points out to Ghostworth that he was meant to grab the ceiling handle before falling. It's expected, even before he's woken up, that he does a Herculean amount of effort. So further, we establish that Ghostworth is not quite a utility like Ship in that he can't do an automatic task like that, but also has the same expectations of a utility. He's enthralled to external processes and maybe he's unhappy. We've established that barely having any dialogue at all. And the fact that Ghostworth's pain was preventable was a little punchline. To illustrate this a bit more, we're gonna go back to the beginning of the opening scene. A sonorous hum, the word dream breathes in and out. Klaxon as wake up flashes and splits, revealing an aerial view of the storage room. I think it's important to mislead the viewer at the beginning. Uh, like I say, you wanna know it inside and out, so if you can subvert it, it makes them feel safe and taken care of, and they're gonna trust you to deliver more on the episode. The question is, what else could we have done there? Um, and it depends on what effect that we want. So we could open on the sleeping face of Ghostworth from above, right? And then we would assume, because he's sleeping, because it, we're, we're gonna be slowly drawing back, that we're just above him, that he's asleep on a bed that's on the ground. And then we see him fall towards us. But that works better in live action, because in animation, if you see a face and then it suddenly comes towards you, you don't necessarily think that that person was on the ceiling. There's not enough information to draw it to you. Whereas if it's live action, you can actually see the, the meat in their cheeks sagging towards the camera. Or maybe we show him in full, and then as the pod slowly cracks open, there's dry ice, and we establish him as being much more impressive than he actually is, and then he falls to the ground. So depending on the effect that you want, there's lots of ways to shoot the same scene. That scene actually carries on for a good five minutes because I like a cold open to last a while, but we're gonna hop off from that now and go over to the world of the trailer. Now trailers are basically like opening scenes in that you want to establish everything about your short, everything that's good about it. So we're gonna to go to the Starship Goldfish trailer that we released in 2018. So he deleted his memories. What? When? A year ago. Why? He doesn't know. So that's why he's adventuring? To find his lost memories? Um, no. So we set the trailer up as this lonely thing. It's like Moon or The Martian. I keep underlining this, but it's important to show that you understand your concept inside and out, that you can have a miniature version of an episode fit inside of a scene. It means that if you can deliver a scene that gives an audience everything that would exist in an episode, it starts neutral, it becomes complex, it resolves itself, it's funny. It means that if you can do that inside of three minutes, you can do it a ton more times inside of a 22 minute episode. We open with strong material like a comedian, so they trust us. We end our opening scene having explained what's good about the show. Effective and direct communication will get you so far in this business. It's all about explaining the value of your idea, which you'll find yourself having to do over and over again. So, to recap. The first scene can be a cold open, a mini-sode introducing the protagonist, often containing information that fits with the show's main plot. We introduce our protagonist by name. We tend to either introduce the show's most neutral, lowest gear state, or we start with a situation that misleads the audience in some way. We put the viewer on a rug and then pull it out from under them. We end the scene having demonstrated what is worthwhile about the show. The audience now has enough data to decide whether they want to keep watching. Um, the next video is in a week. If you go to Patreon, you can see it a week early, but otherwise I'll just see you in a week.